All right, everyone, we're going to look at this flow chart um, that is linked in Canvas as a PDF document, and we're going to kind of work through this. So photosynthesis, yes, it's spelled wrong, but this is the central idea of this flow chart. So when we go through and we talk about photosynthesis, it's, if we break the word apart, it's derived from two words, photo and synthesis. And the word photo means light. So photographs use light to expose film, once upon a time they expose film, which then could be um, processed and then we printed pictures. Okay, once upon a time. But photo means light. And what does synthesis mean? Synthesis means to put together or to make. Okay, if you synthesize some music in GarageBand, Okay, you're putting pieces like tracks together to make something. Okay, so GarageBand is really a synthesis program. Okay, so we're going through and we're putting things together. So photosynthesis is putting things together using sunlight. And what things does it put together? Well, it's three things that it needs. It needs light and it puts together carbon dioxide and water. And the combination of carbon dioxide and water getting put together, now the order in those three doesn't matter. Realize that, right? If you have carbon dioxide here and water here, perfectly fine, it's just a list, okay? So the order of those three. But it takes light energy, and it puts light energy, and it puts it together with carbon dioxide and water molecules. Okay, it puts those things together. And what does it make as a product? It produces, oops, that's a little too far. So we take these two molecules together, CO2, H2O, and we get glucose, C6, H12O6. We put those together and we get glucose. We use light to put together carbon dioxide and water to produce glucose. Okay, so in this process, photosynthesis is a process in which it takes sunlight and it converts it into chemical energy. Now this could just be light, could be sunlight. If you had sunlight here and only light, I don't care, light, sunlight, I'm calling all the same. So it takes light or sunlight and it converts it into chemical energy, which is stored as glucose. Why do we eat plants? Because they have glucose, which is a form of stored chemical energy. Okay. Plants, through the process of photosynthesis, produce a, a gas called oxygen, O2. That's what we breathe in, is O2. We actually breathe in other gases, but that's the one that we need for cellular respiration to occur. Okay. So where does photosynthesis occur? According to your word blank, where does photosynthesis occur? In plants. But realize it also occurs in algae and some other bacteria. Photosynthesis also occurs in algae and some other bacteria. And what are the specialized organelles found in plants, okay, some bacteria and algae, that is the location where photosynthesis occurs? We call those chloroplasts. chloroplasts. Yep, those are called chloroplasts. And they contain a pigment called, oh, this is cover now. So plants have a specialized organelle called chloroplast that contain chlorophyll, which is a natural pigment that receives sunlight that allows photosynthesis to occur. So if you get grass stains on your clothes, it's chlorophyll that you just got on your clothes. You have the pigment called chlorophyll on your clothes. Chlorophyll is green. Typically, we think of plants as being 
green. And the reason why we, and the reason why that happens is not, is back to the absorption and reflection of light. So when we talk about sunlight, we consider sunlight to be white light. And white light is a combination of the spectrum of Roy G. Biv. So white light has red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet all in it. If you take a prism, you can get that diffraction gradient and get all the colors of the rainbow. So why are plants green? They're green because they absorb everything except for green, which means they reflect green. They absorb red really well. They absorb blue and violet really well. But they absorb almost zero green. That's why they're green. They reflect green light all from the pigment of chlorophyll. Overall, our general equation for photosynthesis is we need light or maybe no one. I'm going to change this. I'm just going to say it needs energy in the form of light. Okay, we need energy, which is in the form of light. We need plants need carbon dioxide and they need water. Those are the three things plants need to survive. They need light energy, they need carbon dioxide, and they need water molecules. And as a result, they produce glucose and oxygen molecules. Now, balanced chemical equation. There's a six in front of every single molecule except for glucose. So there's six carbon dioxide molecules, there's six water molecules, there's six oxygen molecules, and it forms glucose. One glucose molecule. Remember, the reactants are what you start with, the products are what you end up with. All right, in a moment I'm going to take that down and I'm about to put on pages two and pages three that it's still going to be blank, but I put some stars on pages two and pages number three. The reason is I want you to make those same stars because as we progress today, those are the things I want you to fill in as the stars. There's some other information, they're fine, it's great. I'm not gonna hold you accountable for that stuff, but there are some things here that I wanna make sure we focus on. This is, this packet is a practice to learn homework assignment that is posted in Canvas. So after today, assuming you have all the starred things uh, filled in, take three pictures, upload this to Canvas, and for some of you, that will be a first practice to learn assignment in quite some time, okay, which you should not, you should be taking care of. So on page two, put little stars next to those six boxes. Those are the six things on page two that I want to make sure you get and you understand and you have some idea of those six boxes and only those six boxes. If you want to fill in the other stuff, you're more than welcome to, but those are the things that I I also, on this diagram, there's three things on the diagram that I'm going to ask you to fill in. And I want you to fill in all of these questions for the three bullet points underneath. Okay, those are the things that as we go through, I want to make sure you fill those in. Okay. So let me switch this. So on page two. On page two and on the front board is kind of some of the same ideas. On the screen is the experiments that three sciences did with a lot more information. On the board are the takeaways that I'm going to be telling you like, hey, this is what you really need to know. Okay, so there were three scientists in the 16 and 1700s that you either need to know them by name or what they did. Either one. So you either need to know that the scientist's last name was von Helmont or that he did the willow tree experiment. 
because I'll tell you both. Okay, you either need to know Priestley or the candle in the jar, or you need to know Indian House was candle in the light versus dark. Okay, so you either need to know them by name or what the experiment that they did was, as well as what they concluded. So where it says like a picture, more than anything, I would write what is on the board. If you want to draw a picture, I suppose you can. But realize that von Helmont, he was the willow tree guy. Okay, and what he did, and I'll tell you what he did, but you just want to know von Helmont was the willow tree and what he concluded. That's what I want. So von Helmont took a willow tree. It was about five pounds with all the soil. I'm sorry. The plant itself was about five pounds. And he watered it for five years. And after five years, the soil went down only a tiny little bit, 50 grams, which is really, really small. It's like 10 nickels. If you were to take 10 nickels, six, 11 nickels, 12 nickels. If you were to take 12 nickels and stack them on a scale, that'd be right around 57 grams. So in five years time, he lost about 12 nickels worth, like the, the coin the mass insignificant but in that same five years his plant went from five pounds to 169 pounds so his plant gained mass by like 154 pounds it gained 154 pounds in five years and it didn't come from the soil so von helmont willow tree guy concluded that the mass gained by the plant came from the water so on the board, I also have a willow tree, mass came from the water he had. That's what he concluded. Just for the record, he's not 100% accurate. It's not simply from water. It also came from the carbon dioxide. Photosynthesis is putting things together. It's putting water and carbon dioxide molecules together. And that's what happened with von Helmont. He didn't know about the carbon dioxide piece. That's his conclusion. Again, not 100% accurate. But that's what he concluded. Von Helmont, willow tree, mass came from the water he added to the plant. Fast forward to the 1771. There's a scientist by the name of Joseph Priestley. Priestley did the candle in a jar. That was his experiment. And what they already knew is if you took a candle and you put it in a jar, it burns up. They knew candles need oxygen in order to stay lit. You put a candle in a jar, it runs out of oxygen, flame goes out. So what he did, this was like his controlled experiment. That's what he, he knew that already happened, and he did that. And then in another jar, he took a mint sprig, so like a chunk of mint plant, and he put it in there. And what happened is the candle didn't burn out like it did with no mint. It burned longer. And according to the caption, it burned for several days, which is an impressive candle, by the way. So Priestley said candle in the jar, the candle, he observed that the candle remained lit longer. Therefore, he concluded that that mint plant, the plant must be giving off oxygen. That's why the candle stayed lit. So he concluded that plants give off oxygen. Priestley, candle in the jar, plants give off oxygen. These three scientists in this general format, you should be expected to answer questions on an exam. Speaking of exam, I forgot to mention this. We have decided, Mr. DeGrand, Mr. DeBoer, and I have decided that we want to test before you go on Thanksgiving break. Generally doesn't work well to take five days off of school and then come back and try to test. We're at a good stopping point, it's gonna work out okay. We are going to test the Monday, Tuesday before Thanksgiving. If you know already that you will not be here on that Monday or Tuesday before Thanksgiving, realize we understand and we can make this work. We can either do something on Friday morning, so teacher work day, you can come in Friday morning, we can take it Friday morning, or if need be, we could, well, we could take it Wednesday, or we, could, we can take it when you come back. Okay. Just generally, students don't know necessarily do better with five days off of school and then come back to take a test. So if you know you're going to be gone on Monday the 23rd or Tuesday the 24th, we should make some arrangements for you to maybe come in on Friday morning and take that test ahead of time. Okay. Otherwise, we can make even different arrangements. But okay, 
So Priestley, Ingenhaus. These three expect to be able to answer some questions on an exam. Ingenhaus, Jan Ingenhaus, repeated Priestley's experiment except for, right, candle in the jar, except for he put one candle in the dark and he kept the other one in the light. And this, this image is hard to see. But what happened is the one in the light, just like Priestley said, the candle stayed lit, and according to this diagram, it stayed lit for seven days. However, the, the, the candle in the dark and the plant in the dark, the flame went out. Okay? So he found, the conclusion is that he found that plants in the dark produce carbon dioxide and plants need light for photosynthesis to occur. So he was the guy who said, hey, plants need light in order for photosynthesis. If they don't have light, they can't photosynthesize, and they aren't producing oxygen, that's why the candle went out. Okay, so you should know those three scientists exactly like I have on the board, either them by name or what they did. Okay, you either know it's Von Helmont and the willow tree, or the willow tree. You know it's Priestley or the candle in the jar. It's Ingenhaus or the candle in the jar. Or you maybe you know all of the parts, but you need to be able to kind of come up with that. Then what conclusions did they draw? Okay, fast forward a few things. Well, here, let me just point out a few things. Remember, organisms that go through photosynthesis, plants, algae, and some bacteria. Notice how mushrooms aren't on this list? Are mushrooms plants? What's a mushroom? Fungi. Fungus, right, or a fungi. It's often used to describe me, too, a fungi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, funguses or fungi, mushrooms are not plants. Now, why are they not plants? They don't photosynthesize. They actually eat stuff. They're decomposers, right? They break down dead, decaying stuff. So they eat. They are something called heterotrophs, not autotrophs. Um, but those three types of organisms go through this. This is kind of the big, this is like underneath that chart on that page, which you don't necessarily need. But this is basically how they came up with the, the equation for photosynthesis, is based upon the scientists. Von Helmont said plants need water. Ingenhaus said um, that they produce glucose. And Priestley said, hey, they plants that give up oxygen. Okay. This is what I was talking about earlier, that when we talk about absorption spectrums, that plants absorb a lot of violet and blue colors and a lot of red color, but absorb almost zero green light. Therefore, they reflect green light. That's why plants tend to be green. There are three things on this diagram that I, I put stars next to that I want you to fill out. The three things are the stroma, the thylakoid, one of these individual discs is called a thylakoid, and then the stack of them is called a granium which is a stack of thylakoid. It's also listed on the board, okay? And the pictures are posted in Canvas. Stroma, granium, and thylakoid. Those are the three things from this diagram that I'm, I really want you to be able to know. Sorry, I'll move in a second. All right, so those three things. The stroma is a, a, a aqueous, a fluid-filled area. It's kind of like the cytoplasm of a cell, except for it's, it's like the cytoplasm of a chloroplast. So it's a jelly-like substance on the inside of the, the chloroplast. The thylakoid and then a bunch of thylakoids is called the stroma. Now, why are those two things important? Well, that's one of the questions that we'll get to. So the diagram, okay, now we, we talked about we starred these things underneath the picture. The diagram above is a specialized organelle called a chloroplast. This organelle, this organelle is in what type of cells? Plants and? Some bacteria. Some bacteria and found in algae. And the two most important parts of this organelle, straight off that slide, by the way, the first bullet point, are the thylakoid and stroma. The two most important parts of this organelle are the thylakoid and stroma because 
this is where photosynthesis takes place. Okay, so this diagram is the simplified bullet point version of what we wanted you to fill in here. Those are the three things we asked you to label, where it's the organelle called the chloroplast, it's found in plants, algae, and some bacteria. The thylakoid and stroma are the two most important parts because it's the place where photosynthesis occurs. Okay, so that's something that we want you to be able to answer. For those of you watching the video, those are the three scientists that I was referencing. I'll give you a chance to look at that. Okay, so that's, that's photosynthesis in a nutshell. Realize we are just talking about the overall process. There's something called the light dependent, light independent. The Kelvin cycle is in there. Way more complicated than we're making this. Realize that. We are looking at big overall pictures. Just like when we move on to cellular respiration, we're going to look at a big overall like chemical reaction of cellular respiration. There's three processes that we're not going to even, I don't even think we're going to mention the names of them. Okay, but there's three parts of it. But we're just saying what goes in and what goes Okay. Then the next thing I would like on that back table, if you didn't grab one already on your way in, there is another chart, a diagram like this you should grab. Okay, it looks like this. It's on that back lab table. So on this diagram, there are a lot of blanks. Some of them are equations, some of them are not. Okay, what I want you to do is I want, I'm gonna give you about two minutes. And from memory, I want you to do the best that you can to fill in these blanks. Now remember, these two equations are inverse of each other. So really what you need to do is memorize one of the equations and then just flip them around and then that's the other equation. It's energy and energy, one's light energy, one's ATP energy, okay? But notice these arrows come in and go back. They come out and go into the next thing. They come out and go into the next. They come out and they go into the next. It's a cycle, okay? So I'm gonna give you two minutes to do it from memory. After that, I'll say, hey, all right, two minutes is up. If you have done as much as you possibly can, I will draw your attention to a different activity that you've, we've already spent some time going through, and you can use that as a reference. Then we'll spend a couple minutes kind of going through as a class, just to kind of wrap it up. Okay, so I'm gonna give you two minutes to fill that in from memory right now. All right, it's been two minutes. If you're still going strong, still pulling stuff from memory, keep going. It's best to do this from memory. It's okay to struggle. Struggling is good for learning. But when you get to the point where you say, hey, I can't go any further, then you have this worksheet. This is a worksheet you got after last two weeks ago on Wednesday after your test. Okay, it's uh, called Photosynthesis and Respiration. It's a Pogel activity. This chart is very similar the diagram you have. The reason I'm asking you to label this diagram is on your test, next week, Monday or Tuesday, there will be a diagram similar to this, similar to that, that we will expect you to be able to label. That's why we're practicing labeling this diagram. So now take a couple moments to check what you already have filled in and then fill in the missing thing. And then we'll take a little bit of time to go through this. Okay, so this was from last two weeks ago, I don't know, when we took her test, it was on that table. If you don't have that, it is right there on the stack of papers. All right, let's talk about this. This is something, like I said, I expect you to be able to do on your test. I expect you to be able to label what goes in and what comes out of each process. I expect you to be able to tell me what the reactants of photosynthesis are. I expect you to tell me what the products of photosynthesis are. I expect you to tell me what the reactants of cellular respiration are. I expect you to tell me what the, rea uh, the products of cellular respiration are. Okay, so 
Photosynthesis occurs in the chloroplast. Six carbon dioxide, six water molecules, and light energy. Energy in the form of light. So we need light, carbon dioxide, and water. What comes out? Glucose, C6H12O6. Oxygen, six of them, six O2s. Glucose comes out. Oxygen comes out. Now, if you have these two arrows flipped, realize whatever, right? They're coming out, they're going. Okay, so these are reversible. Glucose and oxygen go into cellular respiration. Glucose and oxygen are the reactants of cellular respiration. That occurs in the mitochondria. What's the products? What comes out is glucose, I'm sorry, carbon dioxide, water, and chemical energy in the form of ATP. So ATP comes out. Now, how do I know ATP is in here? It's because ATP doesn't cycle back up. Okay, ATP, chemical energy comes out. Glucose, um, carbon dioxide and water feed into the chloroplast. And those get recycled or cycled, I should say. Those are our products. Remember, well, Helpful hint. Remember, photosynthesis and cellular respiration are inverse reactions of each other. The products of one are the reactants for the other. And all living things go through cellular respiration. Funguses, fungi, they go through cellular respiration. Animals, humans, go through cellular respiration. Plants also go through cellular respiration. The thing is, where does the glucose come? Plants produce their own glucose, which they use for cellular respiration. We have to eat other things to get glucose. But all living things go through cellular respiration. Plants, algae, and some bacteria go through photosynthesis. This diagram, or one similar to this, I should say, a diagram similar to this is what I expect you to be able to label. I expect you to be able to label what the chemical reactants or the chemical equations of this are. Any questions about this diagram? Then, we have a little bit of time left. We have a little bit of time left. Tomorrow's virtual day assignment, tomorrow's virtual day assignment is to go and learn about cellular respiration. Cellular respiration, again, we're looking at big overview pictures of it. There's not a whole lot to it, but there's a section of guided notes. There's a paper copy in that corner. I've recorded a video that talk you through it. There's a Google Slides presentation posted that will take you through the guided notes. We'll spend a little bit of time on Wednesday and Thursday, wrapping it up, talking about, hey, these are the big things, these are the big takeaways of it. There's not a whole lot of actually, I need to like tell you like five times because it's pretty straightforward with how much we've stepped back um, with the process. So there's the photos, uh, cellular respiration guided notes that's due on, on what is that? That'd be Thursday and or, no, Tuesday night or Wednesday night, um, depending on whether you're an ADA or BA. Those get, they're also linked, paper copies are in the front corner of my desk. Also, Google Doc is posted in Canvas, and a PDF is also posted in Canvas. If you have any questions, let me know. We have some time to get started working on that right now. If you haven't done so already, I, I forgot to mention that. This was, there's three pages of this that we filled in. This is an assignment. It's due tonight by midnight for you in class. We went through this. It's a practice to learn. There's three pictures. As long as you have the star information that I asked you to fill in, take that picture. Make sure you upload it before you leave because you'll probably for you might forget otherwise. And then make sure you submit that. 